Cossack colonist is an odd sort of a bird. He inhabits the land of expensive restaurants and nightclubs, and there he feeds upon titbits that are dropped to him by a host of amateur leg men and leg women. He pays them small sums for juicy morsels. The juiciest morsels of all are those that concern either the international set, the very rich, dukes and duchesses, or best of all, royalty. All this is perfectly harmless so long as the gossip remains benign and good-humoured. But when it becomes malicious, as it so often does, then it can literally ruin somebody's life. Let the story you are going to see now serve as a warning to all malicious gossip columnists. if your old man's gonna cough up. Well, he sent us a few hundred last month. Well, it's living in Toronto. He doesn't have any idea of the cost of living, especially in London, especially with a degree in English. What has that got to do with it? Well, it makes it harder to get a job. Everyone knows that. You must have your head in the clouds if you spent three years doing an English degree. You're a bit of a traitor, George. A traitor? Remember you grabbing hold of people at parties, making them listen to your theory that Shakespeare was a nun. You could empty a room in ten minutes, but you cared about all that. Yes, well, we're not students anymore. The romantic poets won't earn us any bread. Well, they lived in pigsties. And look what they accomplished. Yeah. Most of them died young. Anyway, it was garrets. It was always garrets for some reason. <laughs> You'll just have to write to your father for some more money. Oh, I've taken enough of him. So have you. No more sponging, George. Well, what else can we do? I'll just have to start making the rounds again. Newspapers, publishers. I thought you tried them all. I'll try again. Fleet Street is not looking for geniuses this year. Well, I set my sights lower. T-boy. Anything. How are you going to show them how brilliantly you write with both hands carrying a tea tray? Just shut up and make the coffee, will you? The kettle's boiling, you nut. A person can't live without money. Your old man ought to know that. <laughs> oh, this guy's got a nerve. Who? Lionel Brewster, the columnist. Why, what's he saying now? Oh, same sort of stuff he's always saying. Same sort of scandal, always about the rich. Here, listen to this. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, seen at the Bongo Club, banker William S. Wilbur, together with beauteous starlet Teresa Burton. Three nights running. Mrs. Wilbur at home with a headache, which is something anyone's wife would have if hubby was out squiring Miss Burton of an evening. Poor old Wilbur. I think it's a shame. That sort of thing could cause a divorce. How can Brewster get away with stuff like that? Oh, they always do. They're all scared of them. You know what I'd do if I was William S. Wilbur? What? I would punch Lionel Brewster on the nose. It's the only thing these guys understand. <laughs> Mr. Wilbur couldn't do that. Why not? Because he's an important man. Mr. Wilbur is a dignified and respectable man. He's a prominent banker. He couldn't possibly kiss it. Brilliant. What's wrong? What's the matter with you? I have an idea. Listen very carefully because I have an idea which will make us both very rich. We're, we're broke, correct? We are. On this William S. Wilbur, would you say that he's angry with Lionel Brewster this morning? Angry? He'll be madder than hell. You think he'd like to see Lionel Brewster receive a, a good hard punch on the nose? <laughs> Damn right he would. And I'll tell me, isn't it possible that Mr. Wilbur would be prepared to part with a sum of money to someone who would undertake to perform this nose punching operation efficiently and discreetly on his behalf? I get you. What a marvelous idea. That's just a little part of the idea. If you read Brewster's column, you'll see there's another person who's been insulted today. Mrs. Ella Gimple. She's a, a socialite, maybe a million dollars in the bank. 
What does Bruce to say about her? Oh, he hints at how she makes a stack of money out of her own friends by throwing roulette parties and acting as the bank. Well, that fixes Gimple. Paul Gimple. Paul Wilbur. Right. Two different people. Both of them loathing Lionel Brewster's guts today, both wanting desperately to go out and punch him on the nose, and neither of them daring to do it. You understand that? Absolutely. Right. Now, this is the plan. We'll set up an organization, and we'll call it... What do we call it? Um, we'll call it... Uh, let me see. We'll call it... Vengeance is Mine, Incorporated. How about that? Well, it's a peculiar name. Well, it's, it's biblical. It's good. I like it. Vengeance is Mine, Incorporated. It sounds <laughs> fine. Listen, we'll, we'll have lots of little cards printed. We send them out to all our clients, reminding them they've been insulted and mortified in public and offering to punish the offender for a fee. We'll buy all the newspapers, read all the columnists, and every day we'll send out a, a dozen or more of our cards to prospective clients. Oh, this is great! Oh, we'll be rich. We'll be tremendously wealthy in no time at all. Now, we'll, uh, we need to offer them a choice of methods. We need to think up a number of different punishments. Now, number one will be... Uh, uh, punch on the nose once hard. What shall we charge for that? Um, 250 pounds. 250 pounds. Right, what's the next one? Black is I. <laughs> Black is I. 250 pounds. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, it requires more skill and timing to black an eye nicely than to punch a nose. No, no, this is a skilled job. No, that should be 350. Okay, 350. And what's the next one? Well, both together, of course. The old one, too. <laughs> both together? Absolutely. Punch his nose, black his eye, 600 pounds. No, 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 no. There should be a reduction for taking the two. We'll, um, we'll make it 500. Well, that's dirt cheap. They'll snap it up. What's next? Number four. Put a rattlesnake with venom extracted on the floor of his car by the pedals when he parks it. You want to scare him to death? Sure. But where are we going to get a rattlesnake anyway? Oh, buy it. You can always buy them. How much shall we charge for that one? 750 pounds. <laughs> right. Now we need one more. Here it is. Kidnap him in a car. Shave his head bald, paint a slogan on his back of their choice, and then dump him stark naked in the middle of Piccadilly in the Russia. We can't do that. Write it down and charge a thousand pounds. You jolly will do it if Wilbur offered you that much. Yeah, I suppose I would. <laughs> hey, that's enough now. That, that gives him a wide choice. Right. Now, where do we get the cards printed? Uh, Bob Singer. He runs the stationers. They do printing. And he owes us a favour. <laughs> Very nicely. Have a name. Wilburham, Wilbur. Hey, here he is. Wilbur, William S. Here, get this down. Yeah. Six, Grosvenor Walk, yeah. West One. Got it? Put it here. And Suki, I'd adore to see your necklace. My necklace, Mrs. Wilbur? The one my husband bought you on your afternoon off in Bond Street at 4.30. No, madam, there must be some mistake. Oh, of course there is, darling. My husband is always making these mistakes. But he doesn't mean any harm. He's the most well-intentioned person and very, very kind. The necklace, Suki. Yes, Mrs. Wilbur.
you didn't think it was genuine. Not genuine? Oh, not a hope, darling. He will have his little joke. Would you like me to speak to him about it, or shall we forget all about it? Yes, please, we forget about it. There's a good girl. I knew you'd be sensible. Just leave the tea, Suki. I'll pour for myself. Yes, Mrs. Wilbur. the letterbox, rang the bell and beat it up the street. Wilbur's got a huge house. How did you get on? Well, I want to see a guy I know who works in the sports section of the Daily Bugle. He told me all about Brewster. His movements are more or less routine. He operates at night. But wherever he goes earlier in the evening, he always, and this is the important point, he always finishes up at the Astor Club. He gets there around about midnight, stays till 2 or 2.30. That's where his leg men bring him all the info. Well, that's all we need to know. Well, it's easy. Money for old rope. seem curiously unorthodox. At the same time, anything you do to that scandal has my approval. So go ahead! Start with item one, and if you're successful, I'd be only too glad to give you an order to work right on through the list. I'll pay cash on delivery. I'll probably be there on the night. William S. Wilbur! Hey, 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 listen to this. A good heart, sock in the nose for Brewster is worth 250 of mine or anyone else's money. I should like to watch your sincerely Ella H. Gimple. We'll be rich! 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 When shall we do it? Tonight? Hey, hey, listen, I've only just realized. This is even better than we thought. Two birds with a one stone, two customers with one punch. How? Don't you see, we only have to hit Brewster once. And each of the clients, Wilbur and Gimple, will think it's, it's done specially for him or her. This is brilliant! <laughs> no, it's common sense. <laughs> Listen, the same principle will apply to all the other treatments, OK? What are you waiting for? Go and answer it. Telegram come for you. Well, I never write letters. I always phone or send a telegram. And since you didn't put a telephone number... Thank you. Uh, did your husband uh, show you our card, Mrs. Wilbur? Well, not exactly, no, but... Well, I happened to catch a teeny glimpse of it by accident. Coffee? Oh, thank no, you. No, thank yes. you. Uh, yes, please. Milk and sugar? Uh, not uh, yes, for me, please. thanks. Well, you help yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the point is, my husband is very, very impetuous and headstrong. And, well, there's no sense in my saying anything to him once he's made up his mind. Do you disapprove of what we're doing? Oh, no. No, don't misunderstand me. I, I don't disapprove, not in the slightest. I'm only concerned to protect my husband from the consequences. Well, if there should be any consequences. Well, if it somehow came out that, well, that he'd hired you boys to, well, to do whatever it is you're going to do to that dreadful man Brewster, well, you can imagine how bad that would be for his reputation. So I wanted to satisfy myself that, well, that you'd be taking precautions. Precautions? What kind of precautions? Well, in case you were recognized or someone took down your description and you were traced. Oh, we've thought of that, Mrs. Bulberton. George is going to be disguised. 
Oh, disguised. Yes. Yes, that's just the kind of thing. And uh, are you good at disguises? Well, well not especially, <laughs> but, you know, we thought maybe dark glasses, a uh, big hat pulled low over oh, his face. Oh, no, so. no. No. Well, maybe I can help you. How is that, Mrs. Wilburn? Well, I... Well, I, I used to be an actress before I married Mr. Wilbur. And... Well, I did my own makeup most of the time. Really? Yes, yeah, so you just wait here and make yourselves at home. I'll see what I can find. Some getaway car. I'll bet they wouldn't even let it into a junkyard. What happens if someone chases us? Oh, we let them crash into the back of us. That's our secret weapon. Well, Listen, you guarantee this is a fast car? Oh, I should do 110 to push. <laughs> and who's going to push? <laughs> oh, that's uh, 20 pounds deposit, returnable, on top of the one day hire charge. There's a surcharge of five pence a mile. We take that out of the deposit. Well, perhaps you charge a commission on the petrol, too. No, no, we'll fill you up at our usual price. Hey, that's all right. It's cheaper down the road. Uh. What is it? Bugs in the upholstery? Maybe this whole plan's not so good after all. Maybe we ought to reconsider it. Oh, no. Not the Hamlet Act again. Whose idea was it in the first place? Mine. And I'm having doubts. If something goes wrong, Look, even Shakespeare was a poacher. Come on, we're wasting time. There's a post office just around the corner. Post office? We need to send telegrams to each of our clients. Hope to see you outside Astor Club, 2.30 a.m. Regards, B.I. Mind. <laughs> You better put your hat on and your whiskers to get used to them. Right. <laughs> How hard shall I hit him? Hit him as hard as you can. And on the nose. It must be on the nose because that's a part of the contract. I hope I recognize him. You can't always tell from a photograph. Will you stop worrying? I've thought of that. Here, take this and give it to the doorman. Tell him to see it gets to Brewster quickly. Act as though you're in a frightful hurry and scared to death. Well, that's easy. It's, it's 100 to 1 Brewster will come out. No columnist could resist that message. Why, what does it say? It says, I am official in Soviet consulate. Come to the door very quickly, please. I have something to tell, but come quickly as I am in great danger. <laughs> Good luck. Hey. Remember, Soviet official. Can you take this note to Mr. Lionel Roost? Please, it's very urgent. Did Mr. Brewster know you? Are you a friend of his? No. He's but... expecting you? No. Well, but... then move along. No, 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 please. It's a matter of life and death. Uh... <sighs> Look, mate, I've got troubles enough without you pestering me. I'm being murdered. Murdered? By a new pair of boots. I can't move without them slicing off another piece of skin. By the end of tonight, I'll be toeless. So, don't bother me.
What's in this note, then? Just take it in to him. I promise you it's urgent. How are you? Nothing. You all right? Yeah. He's coming down now. Well, that's him, sir. Yes? What did you want? Please. I mustn't be overheard. Oh, come on now. What is it you want? Well done! Wonderful! I saw the whole thing. I'm Mr. Wilbur. You did a fine job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it. It worked. Did you see how hard I hit him? Yeah, you hit him hard. Did you see him lift? Did you see him lift right up off the ground? Yeah, I saw it all, George. <laughs> I saw it clearly. It was a marvelous punch. That's the one. Grab him. Oh, but, uh, they've gone. Gotta put. Hey! Come on, I've got it. I've got it. Oh, no! Oh, oh, you do it. Get hey. off. Oh. 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 it. Get off it. Don't be sorry. You awful. Get these off me. Oh! Don't give it. Oh! 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 Vengeance indeed! I'll give a vengeance! Stop it! When I'm done with those two, they'll wish they've never been born! Drive faster! Drive like mad! We'll be rich! We'll be rich! We'll be rich! We'll be rich! We'll have film stars lolling around our swimming pools and head waiters bowing to us! Ah! You can drive on now. What do you mean we even get our name in Brewster's column? George, did you see Wilbur's face when he ran after you? He looked exactly like you in your disguise. I, I did my own makeup most of the time. Ha, 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 ha.